Now in the hands, instantly this does feel very solid. I mean, it feels, it feels great. Today we're looking at the new A15 Android smartphone. No pun intended because this is a new phone, but it's also a new phone from new. It's, it's a new A15 smartphone. It's a new, new A15 smartphone. I think that makes sense. Now in my experience, new makes some great budget devices. This one right here features a six and a half inch HD plus display at up to 90 Hertz refresh rate, which is gonna be great for gamings. And it's very nice to see a high refresh rate in a budget smartphone. This smartphone does come in two different colorways, whether you want purple or white, you're definitely gonna stand out from the crowd. If you can guess what color I got, bonus points for y'all. Packaging does look very nice and inside, oh wow, nice presentation overall. And what do we have here? A USB-A power brick for charging. Also inside the box, we do have a SIM ejection tool, a USB-A to USB-C charging cable, and the device itself right here, which, I mean, this thing, this thing looks clean. And honestly, this is the purple and it's, I mean, I guess it looks like the picture, but when I was thinking purple, I thought it was gonna be like a bright, vibrant purple, like this color right here in the background. This right here is a, a deep dark purple it's almost black in person so if you're looking for a black smartphone that's pretty stealthy the purple one's the way to go now i've always been a fan of these films they have on the screen here as you can see the six and a half inch 720 by 1600 hd plus display with a 90 hertz refresh rate a 2.2 gigahertz octa-core processor 4g lte connectivity so this doesn't support 5g but did you expect it to? Probably not. Four gigabytes of RAM, 120 gigabytes of onboard storage, and it also is expandable with a micro SD card. We have a 50 megapixel main shooter on the back along with a VGA shooter for bokeh portrait effects, along with an LED flash right next to it. And this is all powered by a 4,180 milliamp hour battery. So you're gonna have a lot of battery life with this given the screen resolution, battery size, processing power, you're gonna be good to go. Now in the hands, instantly this does feel very solid. I mean, it feels, it feels great. No flex whatsoever. I mean, it just feels very nice, very lightweight considering that big battery size and also the big screen size and the actual monstrous size of this device. Quick little comparison here, holding it next to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. You can see it is a little bit taller. Thickness is actually about the same and it's about the same as far as width goes as well. I mean, they both look Pretty similar, honestly. Nice matte finish on both of them, looking great. I'm honestly surprised with how lightweight this thing is. Now taking a look at the body of the device, looks great. Nice color all around. Over on the left side, we do have the micro SD and SIM card slot. Over on the bottom, we do have a speaker grill, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Very nice to see here, along with the microphone and the USB-C charging port. Over on the other side, we do have the power button along with the volume rocker and nothing up here on the top. I mean, very simple design, feels amazing in the hand. I mean, this is a squared off design like the old generation of the iPhone, but it doesn't feel nearly as sharp in the hands. Very nice. So now let's get this thing powered on and see how the screen looks. Six and a half inches, let's peel off this film. And there we go. We also do have a screen protector pre-installed, so that's nice to see to keep the screen protected. As you can see up here at the top, actually you can't really see, we actually have some very nice black levels here. I mean, I wasn't expecting this. I know we don't have an OLED display here, but it looks very nice. Nice animation here. I mean, that black really blends with the bezels, which is actually surprising. Now, as you can see that we are booted up the screen, I mean, it looks very nice for only being a 720p display. I mean, it's impressive. Very nice brightness here. Viewing angles. I mean, you can see it, but it definitely does get darker as you turn it off access. So there is that, but I mean, it's pretty much what you would expect. Although it actually is better than I expected, to be honest. Not gonna lie. Now up here at the top, we have a teardrop cutout for the selfie camera. Five megapixel shooter right here on the front. We do have a pretty big chin here at the bottom, roughly about a centimeter in size. Not too bad, pretty much expected. So now I just gotta get this thing set up. As you can see, we do have dual SIM card slots along with a micro SD card slot as well. So that's really nice to see here. And we just drop our SIM card in, pop it back into place. 
And as you can see, we instantly connected to the LTE network. Now, while we're on the subject of cellular networks, this phone is only gonna work on T-Mobile and their MVNOs. It's not gonna work on Verizon or AT&T or any company that uses their towers. Now, I will say the haptic engine is what I expected. It's pretty strong, makes a vibrating sound, isn't the greatest, but it's what you'd expect. I've said it once, I'll say it again, with haptics like this, I would prefer to turn them off because they just don't feel right, and it's kind of on the annoying side, at least for me personally, but to each their own. All right, so now here we go. Set up the fingerprint, which actually didn't even cross my mind. I don't actually know where the fingerprint sensor is on here. Is it on the power button? I mean, it just looks like a regular button. Is it under display? Let's find out. Touch the sensor, it's on the back of the phone. Is it? Is it? I don't, I don't see it. Okay, is there a fingerprint sensor on here somewhere? Okay, so it is the power button. I don't know why I said it's on the back of the phone because there's nothing there, but it actually is on the power button. So, let's do this. I mean, that's, that's honestly really impressive. I can't even tell it's there. It just looks like a regular button. It knows I was on the same area of my finger too. Okay, that's pretty nice duplicate area <laughs> and now we can do face unlock which is gonna be as basic as it gets here but let's let's do it okay I I'm gonna just give up on face ID it's not working but to be fair I probably wouldn't really use it anyways because we do have the convenience of the fingerprint reader right here on the power button so every time you press the power button it'll automatically unlock and then also because we are just using the camera it's not as secure as it would be if it had infrared and other face scanning technologies built in there like an iPhone for example so we'll just skip that and just be on our merry way Speaker actually sounded really good with that, so it sounds like we have a voicemail or something. So anyways, we're on the home screen here, pretty basic as far as everything goes. Swipe over here to the left side and we can see the little Google feed here, which I always like to pick up on the latest news, love that. We can swipe up to go to all of our apps, see if we have any bloatware here. Looks like we have all the Google apps, a ton of Google apps, a ton of Google apps. Like every Google app you could imagine is on here, an FM radio. Nice, because we do have that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have voice recorders, find device. You know, no bloatware here. We do have new help, but obviously that's gonna help you out with the phone, probably have a user manual in there or something. So no bloatware, very, very cool. Let's go to our settings here and see what version of Android we are currently running. As you can see, we are currently on T-Mobile's network without an issue, and we're running Android 13 right out of the box. Okay, what is DuraSpeed here? That sounds kind of cool. DuraSpeed helps boost the foreground app by restricting background apps and notifications will be postponed and not received. Okay, so that's actually pretty cool. So you can actually speed up other apps by disabling other apps in the background. So if you're gaming, it'll use all the processing power it can to play that game. Let's see what the dialer looks like. Standard Google dialer, I think. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not sure. But that was kind of weird. It actually took some time to boot up. So if I force close that, Okay, and open it back up. It actually takes roughly five seconds almost to open up the dialer, so not the fastest, but let's open up the camera and see what we got here. All right, so we actually have different modes here. Over here we have night mode to take pictures in the dark. We do have video mode. Let's see, what settings do we have here? We have video quality up to full HD 1080p. Microphone, you can have that on and off. Okay, just rotated. Camera mute, so you can mute the shutter sound, I would think. Grid lines, volume key feature if you want it to act as a shutter button, anti-flicker, and then custom options as well. So we have the function layout, more modes. Okay, let's see what we got here. A lot of modes here. We have night mode, video, photo, ultra HD, portrait, beauty, filter, GIF, film, pro mode, slow motion, time lapse, intelligent scanning. Okay, so they have pretty much everything you would need right here in the stock camera app. Take a quick selfie. And the picture looks looks fine, actually, not bad. Some pretty good details here. All right, so not not bad, especially with all this lighting over here in the background. It did a very good job. Now, I will say things aren't the smoothest ever, but they do work. Now, with that being said, a camera test isn't that great when we're just sitting at a table with all these lights on. So we're gonna send this phone out to other Roderick and have him put it to the test real quick. Oh, hey, 
Hey, hi there. Welcome outside and thank you for having me here. We're out here on a warm, sunshiny day. We're going to see how good this camera is for videos as well as photos while the sun's still out. The sun's right in my face right now. So we have a ton of harsh lighting on me right now, but hopefully it's doing a good job. Well, let's go take some pictures of some nature, shall we? Now, as far as video goes for recording other things, right now I'm walking at a pretty normal speed, trying not to be too shaky. It doesn't look like we have really good stabilization whatsoever on this video, but we do have video nonetheless. So this is what it looks like when we look at some trees, look at the sky, maybe pan around, take a look at the sun. All right. You know, not too bad, not, nothing amazing by any means, but it definitely does record video. Got this nice rock here some shadows. Let's try to get real close on these flowers here. Can we get it to focus? It's like we're having trouble focusing on this, but let's pull it on out. And really, this is what we're getting here. Let's actually run up over here real quick. Take a look at the car. This is what it looks like when you look at a car on video in some pretty harsh sunlight. Just got done with the road trip. Definitely do need to take this thing for a wash. Hopefully all the details are coming out clearly. And this is pretty much what you can expect from this video camera. It works. It's just not up there. It's around there. All right, so now we're switched over to the front-facing camera, taking a video, and what I will say after taking a few shots with the rear-facing camera is that the shutter speed is a bit on the slower side. The camera app does get a bit laggy, and sometimes I'm trying to open up the gallery and it doesn't work. I have to press it a few times and then it finally opens up. So there's a couple of issues there, and it's not the most satisfying experience, but you know, for what you're getting, it's pretty much exactly as you would expect. And here we are at night doing a video sample. Right now the flash is actually on automatically because of the low light situation we're in. This is what it looks like in pretty unideal conditions if you happen to be vlogging at night. But well, maybe you don't want to have the flash on to draw attention to yourself. So this is what it looks like if there is no flash on the camera just at night in low light. Hopefully it looks pretty good. Hopefully it sounds clear. Got some car coming up behind me. Pretty loud exhaust. And of course right here is what it'll look like if you're trying to record a black car in low light conditions. Pretty much as you would really expect. I mean it's usable. Not the best in the world. We can actually zoom in a little bit. On that stop sign. Pan around. Focus on the lights. Can we focus on the lights? It's a little bit blown out. But this is what it looks like in a dark parking lot. And then of course we also have the front facing video camera at night in low light, which is what a lot of people will be using when they're trying to send videos back and forth with their friends. So this is what it's gonna look like. Not too bad actually. And we are back. Thanks, other Roderick, for those amazing shots you got out there on the field. So we're back in here. Let's actually test out the... Oh, that was actually really fast. Let's do it again. Test out the fingerprint sensor. I didn't even have time to finish my sentence. So touch it and unlocks. So you can feel a vibration every time. Okay, very nice. Fingerprint, very responsive, very accurate. Works every time. Now, with that being said, now that we're back in here, let's actually take a look at some videos to test out what the speakers sound like on this device. Do we have stereo speakers? I'm doubting it, but we'll find out for sure. You what? <laughs> That's pretty scary. All right, so let's get in here. Okay, let's actually make this full screen get up to 1080p 60 which is the max resolution this is a 4k 60 video with hdr so looks like it's hard to talk against myself but we are actually only able to use up to 1080p 60 on here with no hdr support now that was actually really cool right here there's actually auto caption support so if we turn this on live captions okay 
So it should pick up live captions. There it is, live captions working. All right, so it's actually pretty accurate. Not too bad, and you can use it with anything you're watching, which is a very nice feature. Love that. Now, as far as the speaker goes, let's fast forward a little bit. We were sitting here for like three minutes, and finally the girl comes out the window. She's like, is everything okay? And she's like, yeah. She's like, okay. And then she sits there for like two more minutes. All right, so speaker is pretty loud. It's decently loud. Now, if you're in a really loud environment, it might not be that loud. It is clear, although it does sound a tad bit muffled. It's not as good as other speakers, especially if you're going to compare it to an iPhone 15 Pro Max, which actually we should do real quick. Now, keep in mind, this is coming over a microphone and through speakers and all that, so it's not going to be a full representation of what it actually sounds like, but you'll get a general idea. They're both maxed out. Let's start off with the iPhone. Cheese, and like it starts getting all rubbery. So it's like a melted American cheese in a pot. Oh. And now the new. This is a small Wendy's in no Hill. I got some tortilla strips. That's disgusting. And that's what I'm thinking of right now. We got it right here. So as you can probably tell, the iPhone 15 does have a wider range of sound. It sounds a lot clearer, a lot crisper, and just overall better. But, I mean, obviously this isn't a fair comparison. Just FYI. And now let's actually put some gaming to the test and see how well this thing can handle WWE Champions. All right, so we are in the game. It is loading up. Let's see how quick this is. So everything does look smooth so far. Let's actually try this out. Okay. Now I am noticing there is a bit of lag here and there. So we are dropping some frames and freezing and hesitating a little bit. But it's not too bad. As you can see right here, we just froze a bit. And see, it is stuttering a bit, but you know, it's 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 all right, especially for what you're using. So all in all, great value device right here if you're looking for an Android smartphone with a massive screen, an in power button fingerprint reader, a pretty good camera overall. Now, of course, the video quality isn't amazing. The audio is not amazing, but it's it's good enough. It'll get the job done. Just don't try to capture some UFOs or something because that's probably going to be impossible. But as for still images, they actually look very acceptable with that 50 megapixel shooter. I'm actually impressed with it. Now remember, we are looking at a 720p HD plus display, but honestly, it looks very impressive for what it is. First of all, the black levels are actually pretty black. We have some bright, vibrant colors, and we also do have a very crisp image. Now, if you look close, of course, you can see the pixels, but when you're just using it regularly, it looks fine. No complaints. On top of that, I really like the way this feels in the hand. It's very lightweight, like surprisingly lightweight with that big, massive 4,000 plus milliamp hour battery. The design does look great, feels great in the hands. Like, remember, it looks sharp, but it's not sharp. It feels good. Overall, a very nice phone here without breaking the bank.